Tyler, let's start with the, the, the team concept. You seem to be pretty keen to the things that are said about your team and this team. Um, do you keep one ear to the ground and kind of kind of track that, or do you try to block out the noise, or is this a combination of things? Uh, it's kind of in the middle. You also want to be able to hear what people are saying. You know, you listen to their predictions, because sometimes you get motivated just by kind of hearing some of the things that people say, but you also try to like quiet the noise and you try to focus on your group and everything that you're trying to accomplish within. When the Seahawks schedule came out and you see that you're playing back-to-back uh, -back Thursdays, three games in 12 days, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. But, but, but at that point in the season, how much of a challenge is it for a player? Well, I think the biggest thing for us is, one, you just got to be able to figure it out. And two, you know, we get that early bye week. I think it's week five. But it's very important, especially with a young team that we have, that we got to be able to take care of our bodies because we're not going to be beat up you know, the first couple weeks of the season because everything works out for us with the bye weeks and stuff. But as you get closer and closer to the end of the season, then you go straight to playoffs, you got to be able to take care of your body because it's going to be those games that are going to be super crucial. And so we want to make sure that we're taking care of business to where we're putting ourselves in a great situation rather than all oh, these games in these 12 days are must wins. We've talked about you um, trying to avoid hits during game and playing smarter football as you get older and trying to stay healthy and available. But uh, how much have you had to change things around? Uh, well, I haven't really changed a lot, but I think, you know, if there's anything that I change, it's just basically how I approach the season, how I'm able to get ready. Um, sometimes I run a lot, sometimes I get on a bike, but a lot of it is just being able to make sure that I'm positioning myself to be in shape and being able to understand too that I don't have to do too much and I don't have to do too little. I'm kind of figuring out that middle ground of what's enough to be able to prepare me to go out there and still play at a high level. But I want to take you back to your uh, rookie season and the fact that you and Gail Sayers are the only two rookies to have the, and I know you know this, but the five uh, touchdown receptions, one punt return for a touchdown, one kickoff return for a touchdown. Man, that's elite company. Like, yeah. do you think about that? Or, and, and, you know, and to have that in your back pocket, how cool is that? Well, I mean, you know, when I just think about all the accolades, I think it's something that's really cool, but it won't be something that hits me until I end up retiring and finish playing. I can look back and see everything from college to the NFL, my rookie year, like you're saying. But as of right now, it's just always, every day is always on to the next thing. And so I try to teach myself to reflect a lot more, to be able to look back and see how far that I've come and still see um, what's ahead of me and what's to come. But, you know, the biggest thing is just trying to be able to balance that time and manage it because you don't want to miss what's ahead of you, but you don't want to miss appreciating something in front of you as well. I would imagine that's pretty tough because other players talk about that, kind of a stop and smell the roses thing where, you know, this ride doesn't last forever. And you guys always seem to talk about camaraderie being the biggest thing you miss. Um, so you do, you're consciously trying to just gear down a little bit here and there. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the biggest thing that you take out of this is the relationships. And if you just come here and it's just football, then I mean, you, you miss half of it because everybody wants to win a Super Bowl. Everybody wants to come here and perform at a high level. Everybody wants to be able to make money. And when people are done playing, like you said, you hear a lot of the people that miss the relationships. They miss the conversations. They miss being around the players. But who says it has to stop even though football is over? You can still have those same things. It's just not in the football type of atmosphere anymore. So, you know, for me, relationships are key to winning a Super Bowl, to being able to be a great team, to being able to achieve whatever it is that your mind wants you to achieve. Okay, I take you back to those kickoff returns for touchdowns. You ran one back 103 yards against Denver in the preseason that rookie season. Pete Carroll's running along the sidelines with you. He runs into a ref. Can you can you tell me what you remember about that play and maybe the the, the, the meeting after the post game after? Yeah, well, I mean, I just remember even going into that game. I remember Jermaine said he had ran a kickoff back against Denver. Um, Doug said he ran one back versus Denver, so they was like, hey, you have no choice but to run one back. And I was getting a little good, a little, um, I was getting really good opportunities just to be able to do it. I just wasn't able to get out of it. And then when I finally got it, my dad was telling me after the play, he was like, as soon as you started running lateral, I was like, you can't do that in the NFL. And then he said, you know, you beat the outside guy. And once you took off, he was like, wow, I can't believe this dude just scored like that. <laughs> so, I mean, it was something that was cool. It was a great preseason that I had my rookie year. And that's something that I really do like appreciate. Okay, so with your peripheral vision, did you see a collision when you were going down the sideline? No, because I mean, you know, as I'm running, the kicker is the last person to beat, and that's the one person that you don't want to get tackled by. That's the, <laughs> you know, 
know, you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to ask you about the real estate and football. Are there any parallels with what you're trying to, what you are accomplishing there and what you accomplish in football? Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're talking about being a captain, you got to be able to look out for the best interests of your team. You're kind of in that middle ground of, you know, listening to the coaches and being able to relay that message to the players and vice versa, being able to listen to the players and relaying that message to the coaches. And so for me, when I'm out there doing real estate, I'm helping the sellers, but I'm doing what's in their best interest. And you got to be able to kind of get a feel out. You got to be able to understand their mindset, what it is they're trying to accomplish. Some want the most dollars. Some want to start low on price, hoping that it can be bid up. And so it kind of helps you learn how to manage relationships, how to deal with different groups of people. And I think it's pretty cool because then you come here and I got voted captain and you learn how to meet people where they're at. You learn how to talk to people and you got to be able to know how to bring people to the table because for every person it's different. When you look back, what, was there a moment in time where you said, I want to be a realtor? Uh, probably when I bought my first house. You know, I've, I started watching HGTV a lot when I bought my first house. And then I just thought it'd be something that was fun. I just never did it. And then I finally decided to take the class. And once I passed, I was like, hey, let's just start on a second career now rather than when I finish playing. Because once you're done playing, everybody's questioning you. Like, do you know what you're doing? Like, you're starting from the ground up. But if you're able to do it while you're still playing, there won't be any questions about do you know what you're doing because you've already defied those odds while you're still playing in, at a high level in football. Were people calling you? and No, I put Keller Williams' number down and they were getting phone calls. <laughs> were they getting extra phone calls because it was Tyler Lockett? Yeah, people called them asking me to help sell their house and they already have an agent and everything. They just want me to market it. And they're like, yeah. no, unless he has the list and he's not doing any of that. Yeah. So yeah, we've already went through all of that type of stuff. The only way people call me is if they, they're a realtor because you have everybody's information like okay. on a realtor site. So people will try to call my second phone, but it's my second phone. So I can leave, or leave it over here or whatever. I could be on my primary phone while my work phone is doing what it needs to do. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Man. We appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you.